giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We're going way down south, going from the Great White North down to down to about as south as you can get in America. And uh, Ben's going to be taking something from the f- inaugural first in Texas weekend. All right. So as I was watching like four or five, six events this weekend, you know, those sorts of things, uh, I randomly turned on Austin and they were in finals one. And then I watched this match and I was like, really, there's lots going on in this match. Got to talk about this match. Mm -hmm. Um, So we are talking about first in Texas, Austin finals one. There's um, a bunch of uh, teams that you might have heard of here before. We've got one of the breakout stars from last year from Texas, 3005, the RoboChargers. Um, We have Greg Nidell and Rev Robotics, new team, uh, 2714 BBQ. I met his Uh, parents this past weekend, fun fact. Oh, cool. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, they're in Chesapeake, right? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I think I've seen them at uh, one of the events when we played in Chesapeake. Um, but also, uh, they also had 2158, the Austin Cans, who's a pretty well-known team from Texas as well. Um, on the Blue Alliance, we got some more star power over here. We've got 2468, Team Appreciate, a uh, well-known Texas team. Were they a chairman's finalist last year? I can't remember. Uh, yes, thank you, Tyler. They were a chairman's finalist at Worlds last year. Um, the always great uh, 624 Kryptonite, uh, also a very well-known team from Texas. I remember, you know, we've had uh, lots of instances of the Kryptonauts, them and the Robonauts pairing up. This time they're pairing up with Appreciate. And as their D-Bot, their last robot, they had 3834, the Crab Bots. So um now going into finals match one i'm going to start with uh setting up standstorm here blue only starts with run robot on level two and standstorm again not sure why you secure your electrical connections it's three points it's like setting yourself giving yourself a foul right when you start by not starting two robots on the second level i don't understand it but um yeah they they start the match that way um uh, everyone picks the null hatch panels for every slot. That's pretty good for when your teams can go a little bit higher on the rocket. Seems like a great strategic decision right now. Um, the uh, Robo Chargers, now we're, we're going to go ahead and start the match. The Robo Chargers are going to go for pl- plugging one of the front cargo ship pods up front. BBQ goes for a hatch on the rocket. They almost cross the line in auto, and that would have been you know an instant... 10 point penalty right there. No good. Uh, you got to be very careful with that, but they, they do barely, uh, keep it in, um, in this particular instance, but you got to be very, very careful when you make your robot come off autonomously. And it looks like they're doing it autonomously. I'm not a hundred percent sure, or at least autonomous assisted to get there. Um, but you you just really got to watch for that. What, as you get your robots out there, um, on the blue side, uh, appreciate drops a hatch. They see it and they immediately duck around to go. If you rewind just a little bit, Tyler, so we can watch the blue side here. Yeah, thank you. So uh, they immediately notice they drop their hatch and start to run to go pick up a hatch because they know they lost their hatch. So good on them. Um, I'm not sure why 624 preloaded a ball. Uh, to me, maybe maybe this is just me and how I see the game. I think that there's a lot in these that what you're going to want to do is start by putting your hatch infrastructure up because ball cycles are so much easier than hatch cycles that as soon as defense starts happening, it's a lot harder to score those hatches. So I think hatches are good to score in auto, but uh, that's me, but they preloaded a ball to go score a ball in the, uh, in the cargo ship here. Um, and uh, 21 58 misses out on six points by not leaving the platform in time. Again, don't don't quite understand it. Not quite sure if something happened to them in Sandstorm because right after the match starts, they're able to move. So I don't know what's going on. Um, you know, wish they gotten that figured out because that ultimately that six points they miss out. That's two fouls. So um, you just got to uh, or two balls. So you just got to be careful about that. So Sandstorm ends. Um, we move on. Uh, Twenty one fifty eight and thirty eight thirty four go to play defense. Thirty eight thirty four. They get a lot of pending counts this match. So you'll see that throughout throughout here. The ref waving his hand a lot as they play defense on BBQ and other robots near that rocket ship that's that's right there on the front side of the field here. They try to they put a lot of hounding on BBQ during the match. You notice there are also BBQ crossed the line. Um, 
you know, it, it's really easy when you're one of these big robots to break the plane there. It's a very tight fit when you're trying to score hatches between that rocket and the line and you're a large robot. So that's where if you could score those hatches in auto, it may be a good uh, strategic decision if you're going those for your scope of the match to try to get those hatches plugged first. Um, because ultimately they're going to be a lot harder to get into when you got a D-bot that's hounding you. Um, 2468 works on hatches on the cargo ship, then switches to balls. Basically, 2468 and 624 only focus on the cargo ship the entire match, whereas BBQ and RoboChargers, they're basically trying to fill up their rockets uh, with a couple spots and then work on balls. They're trying to build the infrastructure first. However, you'll notice throughout this match, they build a little too much infrastructure throughout, more than they need. So at uh, 76 seconds we're at right now, everyone's still working on their current tasks. Red's made sure to build up some of the infrastructure. You see they've got four hatches on one rocket ship, and I believe it is... Or maybe, yeah, four hatches on one rocket ship, and they're starting on hatches on the other rocket ship. Uh, Blue hasn't touched anything again besides stuff on their cargo ship. So moving on to 72 seconds, you see the Blue's trying to score a ball on the cargo ship. Hatch falls out, ball falls out. you got to make sure your hatches are secure, and if they're not secure, maybe the coach calls an audible that you don't want to mess around uh, scoring too much, pushing into that location because they just lost five points right there and they're going to have to reclaim it somehow. So at 68 seconds now, uh, uh, 2158 comes back from the opponent's side to play a little bit of counter D. Um, it, it, it's, it, they do a little bit of a pick for uh, 3005 at 56 seconds if you roll forward a little bit, Tyler. So they're, it's not the best counter D in the world. They're just kind of filling up the space a little bit. They do put the pick when they need to. But I think this would have been a great opportunity to grab some balls, especially since there are so many slots open now on red, so many ball slots. you got to get them plugged. you got to put points in them. Otherwise, you burned a lot of time putting up hatches when the balls are worth so many more points. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a missed opportunity in my mind to not – you know, try to go figure out how to grab a ball, put a ball in. I'm not necessarily sure if they're 100% ball capable. They probably are. They look that way. Um, but uh, if I was doing like some match mapping like this, I I think that there's some value in having a D strategy at the beginning and then, you know, ball scoring at the end of the match, all, all hands on deck. Um, so at 44 seconds, Blue still has not touched either rocket here. Uh, we're still finishing uh, the cargo ship on their side. Red has six rocket slots and eight cargo ship slots, um, but they've still only put up three balls. They're really lacking on those balls. Yeah, uh, BBQ on the opposite side here breaks the plane again. Again, if, with these big robots, you just got to make sure that you're very careful not to have two robots on the backside as you're scoring things. Otherwise, you're just giving points away. Um, nobody's doing a good job prepping these ball cycles on either side. Uh, really, what you've got to do here is, I, I, I think a lot of teams could learn from uh, 973 did this a bunch, 1747 did a little bit, but dropping the ball out of the player station chute and letting it roll so it sits next to the rocket, you're going to cut your ball cycle to like seven seconds. It's going to be so fast. So I don't understand why more teams don't do that right here, um, especially with all these ground loaders that we have. Um, it would, uh, it's going to speed up everybody by quite a bit. So now we're at 28 seconds. Red's way ahead at this point because of pinning counts mostly. Uh, so, uh, the D bot on the blue side, uh, 38, 34 has waived a lot of, uh, a lot of penalties through that. So just got to watch that quite a bit. What's that PJ? I said that guy's counted real fast. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it, it's it's questionable whether it, it's a lot of pins here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and you, you're probably you're more qualified to uh, debate the validity of the calls than me, I would say. So I'll I'll leave that to your side. But can you guys explain it, explain this pin a bit more? Because it like where is the robot that's being actively pinned? It, I By, think that, oh, yeah, me, go ahead. See. Can you roll back to where he kind of starts the count? I don't know where that was. Okay. Like at the end, they have forty-three points and penalties. So it, 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 he pin counts I, an awful lot. The only no, I can't. I 
Unless it's something that we're not seeing. I don't know. Maybe yeah, it's another I'm, foul and I'm missing it. Yeah. No, well, he's ca- – oh, wait. There's only – is there's not more than one defender, right? No, there's definitely not. That's the only other thing you'd be counting is more than one defender or uh, more than – are they outside their frame perimeter? I don't think so. It doesn't look yeah. like Yeah, that's the only thing you would count are those three. So I think he's got to be counting it. Unless, unless they're outside their frame perimeter and we can't see, but it doesn't look like they are. I don't know. Well, either way, I think he's being a little, a little liberal with those calls. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I know there's some questions. There was a, a thread about this on Chief Delphi too, about the uh, you know if you have one defender in that particular area of the zone, um, mm-hmm. like between the cargo ship and the rocket, and just the distances, what's what qualifies as a pin count there? Um, you know, so I suggest everyone read up a little bit on that and just try to understand where where you want to keep your defense spots and when I'm not necessarily sure what these what these fouls end up being because they don't announce all this stuff anymore mm-hmm. but um but there is 43 points and penalties against blue at the end of this match um because of that so it, it, it it's just stuff to be aware of yeah um so now at 12 seconds uh 38 34 is playing defense until the very end this is probably good here in being in the um elimination rounds here because you don't necessarily have to worry about the rocket RP and things like that as much. You can do just as long as you are very careful about how you do it. Um, you can play some, play some strong D toward the end of the match to keep your opponents from scoring the last ball cycle, especially if you're just going to run over onto the platform anyway, at the end, um, there are a lot of slots available, uh, here also for, uh, 3,005. If, if they play it right, they can get two ball cycles in before they jump on that platform, but they're only able to get one. Go ahead and keep playing, Tyler. Yeah, so it, it, anyway, there, there's a lot there's a lot to be learned here. People will get better at ball cycles. Hopefully, hopefully there's a lot of teams that start to understand how to really shorten these things down. I think you could get them sub six seconds. Um to anywhere well just between some some sub six seconds some more in the 10 second range it's really going to vary a little bit but there's a lot of opportunity to be had here for teams Mm -hmm. so on the climb side blue gets one level three one level two one level one red gets one level two and two level one a lot of point differential for blue blue has the advantage they came from a high seed and they drafted climb so they had climbs it's more undefendable points so I mean, it, re- really, if you look at a lot of events this weekend, it's one of those things that you've just got to it, it, you got to be cognizant of that you've got a hard road ahead of you sometimes if you don't happen to make sure that you can tackle that climb gain that your opponent has. Otherwise, you could be in hot water pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. All right. So at the end of the match, we got so many unused slots in red. It, the budgeting of how many balls you can score slash the way to score those balls versus the number of hatches, both there and the rocket Tyler too. Um, there, there's just so many locations that aren't plugged um, that it, 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 it's balancing that out and planning that out to optimize your scoring is going to be super important in this game. You want to fill up everything exactly and no more if you can. Um, again, because balls are about twice as fast to score as hatches in most cases. The pinning counts ultimately decide the match when we get to that point. It's 43 points and penalties, or at least we think it's pinning counts right now. Actually, uh, looks yeah. like somebody in chat. Oh, yeah? Uh, what what like was it? The fouls were for 38-34 having a mechanism fall out halfway through the ah, match. Ah, well, so that's it dumb, too. So it was yeah. an outside the frame perimeter count. Okay. All right. Thank, thanks, chat. Really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah that's, that's dumb, too. Don't do that. So... <laughs> Uh, just want to be careful as you do it. Um, so there, anyway, there's just plenty of oppor- uh, opportunities for brief scoring operations by the defending robots also on the opposite side of the field that when you come back, you could throw a ball in or throw a ball in as you go to the other side of the field. There's, um, a lot of, there's a lot of nuance to this game we haven't seen yet. But besides just putting someone on pure defense that I think we could see in the coming weeks, I hope we see in the coming weeks. So it's not just uh, an all out brawl. Yeah. 
All right. So to our questions, FN Project 90 uh, says not going off level two is worth it if it means you can score a hatch on a preload cargo at first updates now. Um, I, I respectfully disagree on that. I think that personally being able to go off the level two is super ridiculous important, uh, especially as this game scales and gets bigger and bigger um, and more points are scored. You're really going to want those three points. So you should make sure you adjust your mechanisms and your methods to make it so you can accommodate going off level two. It, it's going to be super critical. Do you, I see you. Uh, do you agree, PJ? Yeah, exactly. Because it's uh, I saw them mention it in chat. And it was in the match I saw, too, because I saw it's that those two concepts aren't mutually exclusive. Mm hmm. Like waffles in the match that I did, um, like forty four seventy six got off level two, scored a hatch, went and grabbed another hat. I can't remember if it was a hatch or a cargo, but either way, they had picked up their second game piece before mm -hmm. the end of Sandstorm. So it was a cycle and a half, and that was a week one with, you know, during Sandstorm. Like I was seeing that down in Chesapeake as well, where people would score that first one and pick up that second one. I didn't see any mm -hmm. two game two game piece cycles yet. Um, but that was, I didn't watch any of your, I'm sure 118 was doing it. I wasn't watching the crazy strong, uh, uh, I wasn't watching any of the crazy good events, but you know, it's like you could, you could do both. Like I believe in all of you. Yeah. And on that, at least from the, from the internal testing I've seen, and also just looking at, you know, 2714 here, that, that looks like they're probably, they might be doing auto off level two. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's very possible to do, there, there are ways to do auto off level two if you do it correctly. Um, and that's auto, yeah. And that's yeah, to, auto. To, to, to literally auto, not sandstorm off level two. Yeah, so, I, was, I, I think 4476 drives, uh, camera drives during auto, I can't remember. Um, Tegan would be able to say in chat. But uh, so, but I think they were driving, getting a cycle. But either way, it's yeah. E even if you're manually doing it, you can still make yeah. it work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Moving on to the uh, second question I got here. A C uh, no Jaco Blue Two <laughs> says, "Why is the second rank blue? That's because they're on the blue half of the bracket. Two, three, seven, six, seven on that side and one four five eight is on the other side in the finals yeah so since they were the fifth alliance they beat four which then would make them blue against the number one alliance and then they beat the number one alliance which then makes them red until they win or lose uh somebody just said robot nerd one odometry is very hard starting at level two i'll be honest i don't know what odometry means so I don't know if that means something to you, Ben. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think it, it, in our case, we just did it slower and it worked. So just think about that. Anyway, we got to move on to our drawing here. You want to go go to that, Tyler? Yeah, we can. And while I'm just uh, finishing it up, uh, why is BBQ a rookie team, by the way? Can somebody answer that while I do the drawing? Yeah. Uh, All right, uh, Fracture. It's the same with teams like uh, 4414 was another amazing rookie team. They played out at Del Mar this weekend. They're started. There's rules for how to become a veteran. Better a veteran rookie sounds like an oxymoron, but it's, if you're started by a certain number of students who have competed before or mentors who've been competed before, you can get, you could choose to get a number from the same like starting era. So since Barbecue or BBQ split off from 2848, who is All Sparks, uh, they keep. They can choose. They could have gotten a rookie number, I believe, or they can choose to keep the. Uh, number of their like it's in the same rookie year as 2848 yeah right, so, think of it as a spin out there you go thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud live and independent pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now